Greetings now in episode 3 of this playlist, we come back to the original Ray Kurzweil chart. And we're going to go deeper into the accelerating rate of change in a progression to the present. But we're only going to go here. Still only talking about this much. Now while this may seem like about a third of the chart, remember that this scale is logarithmic. So we're still going from the beginning of life to until about 7 million years ago. So we are covering 99.9% .9 of the history of life on Earth and 99.97% of the time since the Big Bang. And I'll tell you why this particular segment is where we are going to focus on today. I have featured this chart on the channel before, but in summary, this is when the Earth formed. It took another 600 million years for solid evidence of life to emerge. Now if they find evidence of life having emerged before this point, then the boundary of this era will change and go further back a little bit. But it took 600 million years for even this basic life to form. And just like we saw in the cosmic calendar, early start of photosynthesis, a lot of early things happened. And not until about 88% of the time from the beginning of the Earth to the present had passed, did we get to 541 million years ago, known as the Cambrian Explosion, which in an exponential sense was right on time, but from a linear sense this is called an explosion because the extent of biodiversity and much more complicated life forms emerging happened in what appeared to be very sudden. Cambrian Explosion, 540 million years ago, first vertebrate land animals, 380 million years ago, and now these divisions are getting narrower and narrower because of the accelerating rate of change. The biggest extinction event that had ever occurred on Earth was this Paleozoic Mesozoic boundary, which we'll talk about. The second biggest one, which is much more famous, is the one that divided the Mesozoic and the Cenozoic 66 million years ago because that's when the dinosaurs went extinct. So take this wheel based chart, if this is a format that you like, and now we go to the next one. This one. The wheel that we just saw is represented in this left scale over here. So again, 4.6 billion years ago until the present, the time since the Cambrian explosion known as the Phanerozoic was only 12% of the total time since the formation of the Earth. Therefore we explode this out. So what seemed small now is big, 541 million years. We have the Paleozoic, then the big extinction event, the Mesozoic, Dinosaurs existed from the Middle Triassic about here until the end of the Cretaceous, and then the Cenozoic, the entire post-dinosaur period. And humans still existed for only a very small amount of time over here, just like we saw in the Cosmic Calendar. So again, keep that in mind, accelerating rate of change. This entire skill is merely the expanded version of this small amount over here. So let's talk a little bit about extinction events now. Here on Wikipedia we see the extinction event article and I want to draw your attention to this chart over here which again begins from the beginning of the Phanerozoic 540 million years ago and progresses to the present and this is a linear scale not logarithmic and that's good because it's going to tell us something important. The labels are the big extinction events. And notice how the big one, which was the difference between the Permian and the Triassic, which was also the difference between the Paleozoic and Mesozoic, was about 252 million years ago. The one that led to the dinosaurs being extinct was this one. And each time the recovery was faster and faster, as well as the durability of all life on Earth was more robust because the extinctions are in a downward trend over here. And I speak about this in detail in this video that you see here in the upper right hand corner in this tag. But I want everyone to see how mass extinction was much more normal before, even though these asteroids don't hit at any fixed frequency of time. So this downward trend means the recoveries are more robust. In the Permian-Triassic event, terrestrial vertebrates did not recover for about 10 million years. Life in the ocean was more elaborate, so that recovered much more quickly. But in this Cretaceous-Paleogene extinction event, there was substantial recovery and radiation of new life forms in just 200,000 years. Not a complete recovery, but nonetheless, in just 200,000 years, there was a lot of recovery, so much, much, much faster than anything that happened after this big extinction event. 
the Permian Triassic extinction event may have been an asteroid, but I think more likely it was a comet because it changed the climate of the entire Earth substantially and had a much greater amount of extinction, but there's no crater. And yes, craters go away once too much time passes, but an extinction event this big would give a lot of evidence of craters. Even if it impacted in the ocean, there would be some evidence over here. So I think it was a comet because that lends itself to climate change and changing the entire atmospheric composition of the Earth but less likelihood of a crater. And remember, this is the closest that life on Earth came, at least in the Phanerozoic, to being completely extinguished. But nonetheless, the trend line was not broken. Over here, I want to draw your attention to this little spike. This is not even considered one of the big extinction events. And since this extinction event is not labeled, we're going to go to a bigger version of this chart. So this version has no labels, and this one, which is the end of the Eocene extinction event about 34 million years ago, there were two very large asteroid impacts on the Earth at that time. A five-kilometer one that hit Siberia and created that Popeye crater, and a three-kilometer one that hit what is the U.S. state of Maryland today and created the Chesapeake Bay, and therefore the climate of the entire Earth changed. It wasn't as much kinetic energy as this one, but it was close. It was more than half as much because two different parts of the Earth were hit relatively close together, maybe one million years apart, and almost exactly on opposite hemispheres for maximum coverage of disaster effect. Yet this extinction event was small enough that it's not even considered one of the big five that paleontologists talk about, even though the extent of impact event really was comparable to the one that made the dinosaurs extinct and was probably higher than these or even this one over here, and certainly the Triassic ending one over here. Because the durability of life was such that recoveries could be extremely fast and species could adapt more easily without going extinct. Now you had cold weather creatures, polar creatures, and so that's why this trend line going down is what one would expect under the accelerating rate of change. If an asteroid the same size as the one that made the dinosaurs extinct were to hit the Earth right now, not only would we detect it many years in advance as I speak about in this video up here in the upper right hand corner, but even if it hit us undetected, it would not take that long for us to recover because even if just one one thousandth of humans survived, 8 million out of 8 billion, all knowledge would be retained, all technology would be resurrected, and in a very short time we would have a world and a civilization that has a lot fewer humans still. The number would not get up to 8 billion for a very long time, but it would be a much more advanced and prosperous world after the recovery just because of the innate nature of adaptation. But even here, this linear scale is at 50 million year divisions. Everything pertinent to humans happened only within the last 7 million years or so, and that's not even modern humans, but just the split between gorillas and humans and later chimpanzees and humans. And that's what we will talk about next because that is too granular to go into in this video in our progressing study of the accelerating rate of change. Thanks for watching.